North Korean soldiers are fighting in Ukraine. Some of the troops are undergoing training in Russia for potential future deployment alongside Russian forces, according to the Institute for the Study of War, ISW. According to the Washington Post, both Ukrainian and South Korean officials confirm that North Korean soldiers are operating in Ukraine alongside Russian troops. A representative of Ukraine's military intelligence stated that certain North Korean officers are observing Russian forces and studying the battlefield in Russian-occupied territories of Ukraine. However, Ukraine's defense forces have not yet independently detected North Korean units within Ukraine. The Ukrainian official also noted that several thousand North Korean infantrymen are currently training in Russia. He added that Russian military command could deploy them to the front lines in Ukraine by the end of 2024 or to Russia's border regions to free up Russian reserves for combat operations in Ukraine. South Korean and Ukrainian officials reported that North Korean troops are likely operating in the occupied Donetsk region. This was confirmed by a recent missile strike by Ukrainian forces which killed many North Korean officers. Analysts at the ISW have been unable to determine the scale of the North Korean troop presence that Russia may deploy to the front or the number of Russian forces that could be freed along the border. However, these scenarios could aid Russia's effort to bolster its primary offensive operations in Ukraine and delay the final phase of the Russian offensive known as Summer 2024. North Korean troop deployments to Ukraine could also create opportunities for Ukrainian exploitation depending on the quality force structure, arrangement and interoperability of North Korean forces. The ISW states, during a June visit to North Korea this year, Russian President Vladimir Putin and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un signed a comprehensive strategic partnership agreement. Under the agreement, in the event of aggression against one of the countries, the partner guarantees immediate mutual assistance. Today, North Korean troops are already participating in combat operations against Ukraine. They are operating in the temporarily occupied territories as advisors. In early October, a missile strike by Ukrainian forces near the temporarily occupied Donetsk killed six North Korean officers. According to military expert Pavlo Narozniy, sending troops to assist Russian troops will have very negative consequences for North Korea. Three civilians, including a 12-year-old child, were injured in a Russian airstrike in the Ukrainian region of Zaporizhia, local authorities said on Saturday. According to Ukraine's Interior Ministry, the attack was carried out using a guided aerial missile, targeting a residential area and local infrastructure. The State Emergency Service of Ukraine shared a video showing police and rescue teams working on the site. Residents were assessing the damage on Friday after Israeli airstrikes on central Beirut a day earlier killed at least 22 people and wounded dozens as they left two neighborhoods smoldering, Lebanon's health ministry said. The air raid in the capital apparently targeted two residential buildings in separate neighborhoods simultaneously. It brought down one apartment building and wiped out the lower floors of the other. Rescue operations were taking place in Burj Abi Haider where an entire building collapsed. Mohammed Tarhani was sitting in his living when the strike hit. He was displaced from Eba in southern Lebanon due to the constant Israeli airstrikes there. Where is one supposed to go now? Israel says Hezbollah is hiding rockets among civilians. America and Israel need to know that Hezbollah would not hide rockets among civilians, he said. The Israeli military said it was looking into the reported strikes. Israeli airstrikes have been far more common in Beirut's tightly packed southern suburbs, where Hezbollah bases many of its operations. 
Bilal Osman, a resident in the neighborhood, said, most of the displaced people escaped from the south and Dahia because Beirut is considered safe to a certain extent. There is no sign of anything here that raises suspicion or doubt, to justify the neighborhood being struck, he added. After the strikes, Hezbollah's Al Mana TV reported that an attempt to kill Wafik Safa, a top security official with the group, had failed. It said that Safa had not been inside of either of the targeted buildings. Thursday's strikes followed a year of tit-for-tat exchanges between Hezbollah and Israel that boiled over into all-out war in recent weeks, with Israel carrying out waves of heavy airstrikes across Lebanon and launching a ground invasion. Hezbollah has expanded its rocket fire to more populated areas deeper inside Israel, causing few casualties but disrupting daily life. The attack came the same day Israeli forces fired on United Nations peacekeepers in southern Lebanon and wounded two of them, drawing widespread condemnation and prompting Italy's defense ministry to summon Israel's ambassador in protest. Before the latest strikes, Lebanon's Crisis Response Unit said Israeli attacks over the past day had killed 28 people, bringing the total to 2,169 killed in Lebanon since the war erupted last October.